All right. Well, welcome to another edition of Career Conversations. I'm your host, Stephanie C. Harper, and my co-host, Anitra Henry Hunting. Today we have Akila Thompson Robinson on with us, and we're going to be talking about the tools that we use. I want to kind of start off here again, explaining the definition of career. Um, I've gotten quite a few comments back and forth over the last few weeks where people are saying, hey, I really enjoy your show. I didn't realize that you guys were talking about business stuff too. I thought career conversations was for job seekers. Well, let me kind of help you guys one more time. The definition for career is not only for job seekers. If you were to go to Merriam um, Webster Dictionary, you will see the word career says the following. It is anyone who has progressive, continuous pursuit in a field. So when we talk about career conversations, we talk about all different types of things. Even though I am self-employed entrepreneur, this is still my career. So we can't get into the habit of thinking that once we are on our own that we no longer have a career. And according to the dictionary, it does not mean that you have to be with XYZ organization for the next 30 years. It simply means that you have continuous progression and pursuit in your field. So I just wanted to clarify why we call this career conversations and why every conversation that we do is not about job seeking. So we do have some conversations around job seeking. We definitely um, will touch on those. We'll talk about the subjects that you all are interested in. But I've gotten several comments on that as to um, what people thought career conversations was about and actually what career conversations actually is about. So without further ado, I want to talk to you about our topic today and we're talking about the tools that we use, the free, the favorite, and the flaws. And this conversation actually comes from a conversation that Akila and I were having in a group, a group of um, primarily business women and we were talking about the service MailChimp. And one of the young ladies in the group actually was looking for a free email host. So it kind of threw me for a minute because I was like, a free email host? Is she looking for a, a website or is she looking for just email? And so the long and short of it is that she was looking for um, a way to do her free, her um, to have an email account for free. And Akila made a comment to her, and in that comment, she said, um, One of the issues that she has with MailChimp is that everyone knows that it's free, and it's become like the Gmail of email for clients. Customers sometimes perceive your, stabili your stability and value based on the tools that you use. And I thought that that would be a really, really good topic. Um, let me tell you guys a little bit about Miss Akila. Miss Akila is one of the faces behind um, the Career Magazine brand. For those of you who don't know, if I break it, she fixes it, okay? So <laughs> That's one of the roles that Akila plays in my life. But Akila, in her own right, is the CEO of Ask Me Designs, and she is um, a graphic and web specialist. And she can fix it, she can make it, she can help you break it, all of the above. And I asked Akila to come on and talk with us today because she is really into the technical side of things. And I think when we start to talk about tools that we use. I think there are a lot of tools that us, especially small business owners, that we have gravitated toward in an effort to be what we call effective and efficient. We're looking for things that are, you know, cost effective and or free. Most of the time we're looking for free um, because it all affects our bottom line. But when you're talking about being in business, we've said it before and I'll say it again, it costs money to make money. So there are some things that when you decide that you want to run a business that you're going to have to invest in. 
And earlier today, Anitra and I looked at some of the most popular services that are out there that people are using, and we tried to put them into three categories, free, fabulous, and flawed. I think all of the services that we will talk about today are free, but the, the are free favorite, favorite and flawed. And so all of the services that we are going to touch on today, I believe that they're all free, but we are going to discuss some of the ups and downs of using these services for business. So without further ado, ladies, you ready? We're ready. ready. All right. So as I stated, we, we, we have so many different tools that are out there. And I think right now one of the biggest things that we're dealing with is websites. Websites and blogs I think is probably one of the best places that we can start. There are a ton of websites and blogs and no, you know what I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up and I'm going to start with email. <laughs> I'm going to start with email even though the two are kind of related. I'm going to start with uh, no, let's go back to let's go back to websites. So, we have this community of, of people who are falling in love with WordPress, and I use WordPress. I'm a WordPress user. Um, Anitra uses WordPress. She is a WordPress user. Um, Akila, is your site WordPress or hard code? Everything I do is I develop in WordPress. Okay, so Akila also uses. Um, WordPress, but she she does know hard code and she she can fix your stuff if you are using a hard code website. But what we're finding right now is everybody, not everybody, but there's a, a few people in the business community that are running over to the free. And I think this is a great place to talk about free and flawed. And I'm going to call names today, so let me just put this out here. Google, EcoSign, Dropbox, Odesk, MailChimp, Skype, Google+, Hootsuite, Square, Evernote, Wix, Weebly, Webs, YOLO, Vistaprint, WordPress, Blogger, Gmail, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Blog Talk Radio. Don't come after me, because I'm not coming after you. <laughs> Wait. Those are really the services that we are going to talk about today and some of the flaws as they relate to um, being tools that we use in business. Now, this is not at all to say that these are not effective tools. I use practically every tool that I just mentioned. So I'm not at all saying that these are not tools that we should not use. That is not the premise behind the conversation. What I'm saying is when we are using these tools for business, we have to look at if the free version is the best version for where we are in business. And so going back to the websites, we have the, the Wix, the Weeblies, the YOLOs, and the Vistaprints. There are more free um, business tools out there or free websites, and even um, if we were to go with GoDaddy's website tonight, um, there are some issues with using those type of sites. And the issue, the main issue that we see is the branding. You know, many people will get, and we'll use Wix for the sake of conversation, many people will say, hey, it's free, it's no cost to me, why wouldn't I use it? Well, let's talk about a few reasons why you should use it, when you should use it, and when you should not use it. If you are a new business owner, now you guys know that when I'm talking to business owners, I'm talking to my new entrepreneur, I'm talking to my authors, I'm talking to anybody that has a product or service for sale. You can ruin your brand by not properly establishing your brand. And I think what happens when people go out and they find out that they have an opportunity to get a free website or a free blog, they will sometimes do themselves more harm than good. 
And the reason being is because, and I'll use me for the sake of example, if I have stephanieharper.com forward slash Wix, I think that's how it comes up, every time I give someone my URL, I'm also advertising for Wix. Wix is not advertising for you. And when you are establishing your brand, your goal is to communicate your brand's promise. Now, Wix, Weebly, Webs, YOLO, Vistaprint, all of the other ones that offer free websites, they all give you the opportunity to take their branding off. But there's a, a back end to that as well. If you take the branding off and you decide, hey, this doesn't work for me anymore, then you are subject to your domain being held for, for a period of 12 months. So you're kind of locked into that contract of having your domain snatched up. The other thing is you're using templates, which means that you don't have an opportunity to customize your own brand. So ladies, let's pause right here. Jump on in, ladies. Well, you know, as a web designer, I'm completely against any third party website. And so that would be especially the Vista Prints, the Wix and the Weebly. And not just because, you know, not just a drum up business for me, but one of the main things you mentioned is they own your site. They own your site, they own your content, they own everything. Even if you're paying, you know, whatever small monthly fee, which I'm against anything that you have to pay a monthly fee for. That's ridiculous. You should not have to pay a monthly fee to keep your site up and be up in January and down in February. Um, but anything that, you know, you're paying those monthly fees, even those sites, they own everything. So if you decide you don't like Wix customer service and now you want to move over to Weebly or not, now you even want to get your own site, you can't do that. Um, one of the good things about something, a platform like WordPress, which is one reason why I designed and developed in WordPress, is WordPress is a platform. It's software. What you're getting when you get WordPress, a WordPress site, is you're not going to their site and building something on their site. You're buying your own platform, your own hosting, and you're downloading software that they make available and is you know highly developed and has a whole community behind it. And then you're allowed from there to build whatever you want. You own it. You can get me as a designer to work on it. You can work on it yourself. You can get another designer. There's no limitations to what you can do with it. If you don't like the customer service at your host and you have Bluehost, which I think is great, but to say you have Bluehost and you don't like it, you can pick up your whole site and take it over to HostGator. You can take it over to GoDaddy. Don't go to there, but if you wanted to, you can take it over to GoDaddy. But that's because you own your entire site, you own the entire platform. The software that you're using is what they make available so people can build on it and work on it. And it's more, it's what they call open source, so it's a community based software. They make their money other ways and they make this available for people to use. And I think that's one of the things that's really important when people are comparing Weebly, Wix, Vistaprint, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, they're not the same. Weebly and Wix and all of those, those are third party website builder agents. That they make their money off of letting you build your website. WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, those are what they call content management system platforms where they're just giving you the software. You can even buy a CMS software and that software is resting and living in your home. So that's, that's one of the things I know a lot of people, even clients when I'm talking to them, don't understand. Right. The other thing that you mentioned is the true cost of WordPress. I'm actually, I have a blog post 80% done sitting in my folder <laughs> waiting for me to finish this, is that a lot of people hear, I'm going to go get WordPress because WordPress is free. Mm -hmm. WordPress can be free, very cost effective. The software itself is free, absolutely. There are free themes and free plugins out there. But there's also a little bit of a cost in the fact that you do need hosting, which is usually $100 a year at the most. But you do need hosting, which is something you want. It's like buying a house. You want a house. Buy your hosting. Um, and you do need, sometimes you need support. If you've never touched code or never downloaded a theme or plugin and all the stuff that I'm yelling, I'm saying out is foreign to you, 
you may need help and you'll spend a lot less you're going to pay either with time or money you spend a lot less time by working with someone by getting some training even reading a couple of books like it's it's easy but it's not something that's like oh this is free I'm going to throw up a whole website and as a business you want to customize you don't want the theme that's right out of the box and that's just sitting there and someone can easily look at your source code or Google your images and see the, your theme in five other sites so there is a little bit of a cost to it not as much as some of those monthly because you're not paying monthly you get it set up you get it built you learn how to maintain it and it's yours and that to me is what's the important thing you, you do the work up front and you save yourself kind of throughout the duration of your business If you're only going to be in business six months then yes Wix Weebly might be the thing for you if you want to be in for six years and continue to grow that's when you need to get a real platform right and Akila can you just talk briefly about um, the difference between wordpress.com and wordpress.org because that's another thing that is very confusing and then I also want you to go back to the um, Wix Weebly Web Vista print, something that you said was very interesting in regards to um, them being a third party. And I don't think that, I know that you're speaking in your language, but I really want you to break that down. You guys, when, um, when I first started working with Akila, and I would always say, oh, Akila, I bought a new template. She would just she, she would step on my neck. <laughs> it's, a thing. It's, a thing. it's not a template. It's not a template. But if you could go back and and one explain the difference between WordPress.org and you probably want to uh, go ahead and tackle Blogger while you're there, um, and because a lot of people think that they need separate. They need separate, and that's one of the things that, that I hear a lot of people talk about when we're having um, some of our conversations in our small business communities as well as some of the things that I deal with with my clients as well. You know, they want a blog, and they have their blog hosted over on Blogger, but then they say, well, you know, my, word, my, my site is over on WordPress, and I don't think people really understand um, the difference between WordPress, I mean, yeah, WordPress.org and WordPress.com. So can you speak to that? Okay, so I'll start with WordPress.org and WordPress.com. So WordPress.com is basically it's made for blogging. You're actually not supposed to sell on WordPress.com. So I'll start there, <laughs> that you're not really supposed to sell from there. But it is there. It's really what where it originated, and it's hosted by WordPress themselves you can only use their themes that they have available in the repository WordPress. Do, org, right wordpress.com so wordpress.com you can only download themes that are in the wordpress.com repository you can't go out and buy a theme and upload it you can only you can't buy plugins and you don't have the ability for plugins which is where a lot of the website functionality for WordPress websites come from you can't use those on WordPress.com WordPress.com is really meant to be a blogging platform but WordPress.org is your full suite of everything so WordPress.org is your full software where you can sell because you own it you don't have to worry about any type of terms of service and those type of agreements um, you can expand it so you can either buy a theme, you can build a theme, you can get plugins, you can do all of the different nuances that you'd want to do with the site. And more importantly, it does the same exact things as WordPress.com. So it is a blogging platform. WordPress originally was a blogging platform. I actually, being in the business for this many years, I always hear the opposite. Like, well, WordPress is just for blogs. I can't build a website on it. And that's absolutely not true anymore. That it is now, and if you even look at WordPress branding, they no longer call themselves WordPress blogging. They actually call themselves a content management system because that's what they are. You can do e commerce on WordPress, you can do appointment scheduling on WordPress, you can do um, you can do blogging, of course, on WordPress. You can do forums and any type of membership platform on, on WordPress. You can do online universities. Just about anything that you want to do with the website, you can do on the WordPress platform, which is one of the things that makes it so great is that you can start with the site and decide, okay, I now want to add a store. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't want to start from scratch. You want something that's going to 
build and expand with your business. And you can now just add your store. You can take appointments online. If you go to my site and you go to my contact page, I take appointments online. So you can add that to your site. You don't have to have it day one. You don't have to have it, you know, a year from now, but it's something that's available and you can pretty much if you can dream it, it can, you know, be done using WordPress. Same thing with Blogger. So Blogger is more along the lines of the WordPress.com platform. You're also not really supposed to sell. So if you're thinking of e-commerce, none of these platforms we're talking about other than WordPress.org is what you want. You really want to just go get your own site if you're thinking of selling anything because terms of service is very big and important and you don't want to get hit with oh you owe us this amount of money or oh fines or oh you've got a bustling site that's now bringing in a thousand hits per day and bringing in revenue and that you know they shut you down and you lose everything you don't want any of that to happen so you know all of those other sites if you're going to do e-commerce just walk away <laughs> from those but blogger is very similar to wordpress.com where it's just a blogging platform it's not really meant to be for websites. You can customize in the sense that you can add your own HTML code if you know HTML, but you can't customize it to the point where you can do WordPress.org, like adding static pages, adding functionality. It's really just meant to be something for bloggers, mommy bloggers. One thing I'll say, and if you go to just about any, especially the mommy bloggers, I like mommy bloggers and I follow a lot of them, but if you go just about to any Mommy Blogger has been blogging over a year or any big blogging platform that's been blogging at least a year or more. Do a search on their site and look for the post that says moving from work from Blogger to WordPress. Mm -hmm. I promise you just about every single one of them that is now on WordPress is at some point in time started out on Blogger because it's easy, it's free, you know, it's what everybody kind of starts out knowing and they are now or at some point in their past have moved over from WordPress to from blogger to WordPress and because it's something and it's a pretty heavy lift if you're going to do something like that they usually write a post about it so just google it you'll find all these moving from blogger to WordPress post out there and it's not just the super techie people like me it's regular people like regular business owners regular mommy bloggers regular anyone who's decided this is what I'm going to do for the long term has no longer is no longer doing it on blogger right and Akila that brings me back to um, the point about um, me teasing about themes and, and templates um, one of the things that I learned from Akila is you know when I was explaining to her how I needed for my website to function um, she said you need to find a theme with a blog function in it and when you go out to look for your themes, and maybe you want to talk about themes and, and uh, templates, Akila, but when you go out to look for your themes, it's a very simple fix. You just choose a theme that has the blog function with it. And the benefit of that, going back to branding, is you know every blog that I put out, I blog under stephanieharper.com, and of course I blog under the Career Mag, but every blog leads back to my brand. So I'm not sending people to the blogger website. I'm sending them to stephanieharper.com forward slash this is the name of this blog dot com. Okay? And so those of you who are in the process of brand building, you know, it's key for you because you are in the process of brand building and you're going to want people to find you. And the best way for them to find you is to have your own platform. You guys know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of if you're going to be in business, have your domain. Have your name. Even before you have your business name, have your name. I have stephanieharper.com. I have stephaniecharper.com. I have thecareermag.com. I have booksarebusiness.com. I have why should I hire you .com. My husband has coachhames.com. So I think that one of the first things you have to do is put your brand out there. And the other piece to that is you can have um, things put on different platforms and have them forwarding to your website. And so I don't know if we're going into the too technical um, Akila, but I'd love for you to just briefly talk about how the template and the theme 
is different from the 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 temp or not the template. I don't even know if I'm using the right words because she gets on me so bad. But <laughs> but how that differs from when you're using the Wix and the Weeblies and how you can't make those adjustments and how you can't do your colors and how you can't do your own branding. Well, I will say, and the reason why I get on Stephanie so <laughs> so much, and you know, it's not to like, like bust her chops or bust you know anyone else's chops. It's really because, especially if you decide that you want to do it yourself, you know, if you're hiring a web designer who's going to do it 100%, then you don't you can like zone out in the next two minutes of conversation I'm about to say. But if you decide you're going to do it yourself and you decide you're going to start working with it and only pull in someone you know when you need them, which is absolutely fine, you want to know the right terminology. You know, the moment someone comes to me and talks about they want a template and one of those add-on things, I know they have no idea what's going on in a WordPress environment. I'm the type of person I'll educate, but there are people who will just laugh and start charging. So, <laughs> so you know, if you're going to take that leap to start doing some of this stuff yourself, know the terminology. So the, the biggest thing in WordPress is a theme, and a theme is what in other places and other platforms commonly would be called a template. They call it a theme because it does more than just give the look and feel of your site. Themes also lend functionality. Like you'll get a theme that does e-commerce. You'll get a theme that has a blogging component. And they actually have PHP code, which is a little too technical, but they actually have code behind them that not just make your site look pretty, but they give what your site can do. If you see those little sliders on certain sites, those are all part of their theme. It's not just your colors and your logo and your stuff that that what they be called, what it would normally be called a template. Now, here's the other thing, a little confusing. A theme does have templates in it, so someone may say a WordPress template. They're not completely crazy. It's just not what you're thinking it is. Um, the other thing, plugins. So add-ons. Like if you have Firefox, you've probably added an add-on. Plugins are add-ons for WordPress, and again, they do. They lend more functionality. They lend more of you know more visual. They lend whatever they're going to do. They pretty much expand WordPress way beyond what WordPress is right out of the box. Mm -hmm. On things like Weebly and Wix, they have templates which are really just the look and feel. They're not functionality. You're stuck with either the functionality that they give you, the functionality you're allowed to buy. Like I know one person was telling me that they had to like buy something extra just to get like a cart page, and it was really a cart, and it wasn't a full store. It was bad. It just sounded bad. <laughs> just told them don't do it. Don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to pay extra. Shopify is another one if you want to go with an e-commerce big cartel. I just moved a client off a big cartel because they were just so limited in what they could do to their site. So with all of those, you know, third party platforms where they're pretty much they're just serving you up everything. When people are serving you up things, you have a limited menu. That's really the best way to look at it. If you go into a restaurant, you have a limited menu of whatever they're gonna serve. And that's what you're getting on a Weebly, that's what you're getting on a Wix. This is what they have, that's all you're gonna get. WordPress is a little bit different. It's more like a grocery store where you can pick. I want to make pizza tonight, so I'm going to get the cheese and the sauce. I'm going to get this. I eat a lot of pizza. <laughs> and you can say I'm going to have meatloaf, and you go and you get the turkey, and you get the you know you get the other stuff that you need for meatloaf. Apparently, I don't cook that. But um, you know, it's a little bit different because you're able to make your own meal, make your own menu, and really serve up what you want as opposed to serving what just that platform is going to serve you. So that I think that would be the best analogy for the differences of what you get with something like WordPress and something like a Weebly, Wix, or any of the other ones. Okay, great. Well, I think we could kind of stay on websites probably the whole hour, but I don't want to. I want to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's just so much to it, you guys. There there's so much to it. Anitra, did you have anything that you wanted to stick a plug in there before we moved on? Uh, no, I, I'll continue my conversation with the Kila offline about. <laughs> <laughs> you really right. telling me to? <laughs> well, I think we kind of covered actually. Uh, the next thing on the list was you know the G Gmails and the Yahoos and the free accounts. 
And I think that we kind of covered a, a lot of what we would say about that as it relates to branding, um, you know, being able to, to use your own brand, sending emails and, and reinforcing your brand with every email, blah, 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 right? So I think we can just probably really gloss over what's going on with um, emails, you know, the free, the favorite, and the flawed. And I think one of the most business acceptable, I would say, is probably Gmail. But I want to encourage you guys, um, if you're using Gmail or Yahoo, especially if you have taken the time to get your own website, stop using it, okay? <laughs> Period. So if you have taken the time to get your own website and you have your own, you know, info at stephanieharper.com, info at thecareermag.com, whatever your domain is, use that. Stop using your Gmail and your Yahoo to conduct business. And let me tell you guys, there is a um, email, there's a, a, a video on my page here at YouTube forward slash dot com career magazine where I talk about how you can brand with free email accounts. So for those of you who want to get tips on how to do the behind the brand branding with those free accounts, there is a video out there that explains it. And what that means is you can conduct all of your business right from your Yahoo or your Gmail account if you choose to. However, what it looks like customer is that it's coming from your personalized domain or your URL as opposed to one of the free sites. And that goes back to, um, you know, customer presentation and customer perception as um, Akila was sharing in the group. So one of the things that we see a lot of times is you'll see, you know, stephanieharper.com and then right there when it says contact me, it's like Stephanie C. Harper at Gmail. Why? You have your own domain. Use it. You know, because again, it's an opportunity to reinforce your brand with every single email that you send out. Um, Anitra or Akila, did you have anything that you wanted to add to the uh, to the um, email portion of the conversation? Um, I would just add that most hosts, and a lot of people don't know this, because even when I'm setting up sites and new clients, and they refuse to switch, and I try to explain to them that it's there for them. But most hosts, when you buy your website hosting, offer email. So they have some type of email service, and you can do a branded email. Some of them even set you up with default email because that's how they send messages. WordPress actually sets you up with default email when you install it. So if you're already buying hosting and you've already got your website set up, you don't just have the domain name, which is important to have. You also have a free email service or a free, well, not free, but it's included, an included email client that you can do or your email from there, or you can attach it to Gmail or something else to that effect. The other good thing is a lot of people don't know is that, and I'm picking up my phone, you can actually put it right on your phone. So, like, I have my Axme, there's a contact at AxmeDesigns.com comes right to my phone, so I don't even have to log in to all these different places if I don't want to because all of those are mail accounts that you can actually put right to your phone, to your iPad. You can put them to your Outlook if you have Outlook on your desktop. A lot of people don't realize that when you buy hosting, you also buy all of these additional services aside from just hosting your website. Great. All right. Well, the next thing that we have on our list under the flawed is clip art. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think we see a lot of people who go out and they, you know, find this awesome piece of clip art and then they start adding letters to it and all of a sudden they say, I have a logo. Who wants to jump on that? <laughs> uh, I'll take that one. Okay, I'll all right. Jump on that. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop doing that. Um, one thing I do want to just put a pin right there is I'm going to go back to um, what Akila was talking about with websites. Is Facebook a Facebook fan page is not is not acceptable in lieu of a website. Very good. Okay, that's something else I want to say. Now, Very fast forward back to what we were talking about, clip art. Um, there are a lot of things uh, that <laughs> come with 
your computer <laughs> and the software that you might add to your computer. And one of those things I would say is the templates that come in Microsoft. That's one of the first things that came to my mind when we were talking about tools that we use. And I kind of think of Microsoft and some of their templates that they have as more not appropriate for business, but more appropriate for students um, going through school or something to that effect. But I do see that Microsoft has some tools that I can totally see businesses, even usually small businesses, sole proprietors, whatever the case may be, one or two man shows are taking these tools and using them and saying that this is good enough to get me started and I hope that their intent is to come circle back around. Um, as a person that is marketing focused, it is not okay. You know, you need to start somewhere good and then maybe keep building up to it. But if you start somewhere below the line of good, um, using clip art, using uh, the business card designer with the two templates in Microsoft, um, <laughs> If you use that and people who know better are not going to do it, it speaks to what to expect in your product or service. Very if true. you are unwilling to invest in a logo that is not built off of clip art, if you are unwilling to invest in um, a real business card, and Stephanie, we talked about that on one of the previous shows, um, Vistaprint, don't come after Stephanie, but Vistaprint. Um, <laughs> if you're unwilling to make these type of investments in your business and you're trying to get business from me, why should I think that your price is worth it? Whatever your price is. Um, and that does come from my background where I just believe if you constantly discount a price and someone will never value it at whatever your full price is supposed to be. But everything that you do, and, and if you're doing newsletters that are from a, a Microsoft template, what does that tell me? That's, you know, it, it, basically the amount of time that you're willing to invest in it, how much time are you going to invest in whatever project I'm looking to bring you on to do or whatever product I'm looking to buy from you. So it speaks volumes about it. Um, I, I Again, my thing is with Microsoft and the templates that come in there, particularly the business card, the newsletter, the brochure. Um, I think of newsletters, and, well, particularly brochures, you need to be going to a printing professional to do that. Um, you need to go to somebody who is a printing professional uh, or a graphic designer, somebody to do a logo for you. You know, it's great to have ideas. It is not great to do everything yourself. It's great to know a little about, you know, some of everything, but it's not great to do everything yourself because you can't be great at everything. Right. And it also speaks to building connections and networking, uh, what you can get done. You might be able to barter. I understand as a small business, we don't always, as small business owners, have money to hire, you know, the, the very best at everything. But there are things that you can do that other people want done in their business and maybe you guys can work something out where you can pay a portion and you can give a product or do, you know, barter a service for getting a portion of it done as well. Stay away from the Microsoft templates when it comes to business cards, um, definitely brochures, and uh, even newsletters. I'm not a fan of those at all. Right. And Akil, I'm going to give you an opportunity to um, to share on that as well. But I, I, I did want to say this since she mentioned business cards. Um, Vistaprint and Moo. Yeah. One, two, three, print. <laughs> I'm just going to say, yeah. You know, again, going back to your branding. You know, I think we've all seen this uh, Vistaprint commercial where the lady has a white card and it's a colorful card. I can't remember the business that she has, but she talks about, you know, going 
somewhere and, and getting a Vistaprint card and, and they also did her website to match her cards and they did some stationery to match her cards and I'm like, yeah, and then when you log on to the Vistaprint website, it's their featured card, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's their most popular, most featured. So what does that tell you about brand promise? What does that tell you about you know, branding. This is why companies pay to have trademarks, registered trademarks, you know, branding that is specifically associated with that brand is so that they stand out from amongst the stacks. And so when you go and you use, um, you know, we already talked about the quality of it on another show, so I'm not even going to go there, but when you, um, when you, when your brand looks like everyone else's brand and in a show that we did before, I pulled out a couple of cards where they were like four or five different businesses all doing something different, but people had chosen the exact same template for the card. That does not help you in business. It actually hurts you in business. And so if you're going to want to stand out in, stat, in, in the stack, then you have to do something that's unique to you and to your business. You guys know I do purple all the time. You know, and I've shared with you guys that there are things that have gone out. Um, one of the young ladies that writes for a Career Magazine, we were a media sponsor for an event that she did, and her logo or her flyer was not pur purple, but the Career Magazine logo was on there. And someone who is very familiar with my brand called me, and they were Stephanie. You know, I got this flyer, I came across my social media, and somebody is using your logo. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And so they said, yeah, you know, Career Magazine was on the bottom of it as a media sponsor, but I know this is not you because it's not purple. And I mean, it's, it's simple things like that that you guys think don't make a difference, but consistency in your branding, it definitely makes a difference. And it also makes a difference in how people view your brand. Um, I know Akila's logo is multicolor, but the, the point of her brand is that it's consistent. You know, it's not red, green, and orange today, and then blue, pink, and purple tomorrow. She has multicolors in her brand, but she's consistent with her branding message. And I think that when we when we begin to get into business, we have to be mindful of that. You know, if you're getting your information from, let's just say, you know, Vista, let's say you are getting your cards from Vista Pro, and you decide that you want to go with a WordPress site, you know, what do you have to do to make your website look like your cards? You know, so there's, there's a whole lot that goes into, you know, free. You know, is it really free? When, you know, once you have this business card that you really like and you have to find someone or pay someone to make your website match your card, you're kind of stuck because you either have to go with Vistaprint to get what you want, you know, which is, you know, hey, let me give you 250 cards for free, which is what I'm telling you, but by the time I'm done, I'm going to get a whole lot more out of you because if you want your cards to match your website, guess what? You have to pay me for that. And if you want to take my big Vistaprint sticker off of your website, guess what? You got to pay me for that too, right? So you guys can't always look at free. And I'm telling you guys this because I have, I've used Vistaprint before. You know, a lot of times when we have these conversations, it's because these are things that we've learned ourselves, you know, and you know, I'm not I'm not afraid to tell you that my first business card was a Vistaprint card. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It didn't say um, at the time it was PhD staffing. But do you remember Anitra? It was a black card with like this purple crawler thing on it and it looked like it had a big eye on it. And I've seen that card in the community a thousand times over. But I thought I was doing something. You know, this was 10, 12 years ago, but I thought I was doing something because I had my cards and you know you got to look at the price of fee, uh, the price of free because there is a price attached to free and don't get me wrong if you run out of business cards or if you're in between or you're in the process of you know having your brand redesign 
brand or rebuilding your brand or whatever this go ahead and get those 250 business cards to get to get you through the transition now I know that there's someone out there saying hey I had a graphic designer to upload uh, to create a, you know a personalized logo for me and I was able to upload that to Vistaprint and it did me just fine kudos to you that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the people who are using the the templates did I use the right word Akila yeah for just a print yes <laughs> okay very good <laughs> very good so um, we talked a little bit about using clip arts for logos let me just say this I don't know um, what the copyright is I'm not a copyright attorney so don't quote me on this but I don't even think that you can take the clip art out of um, out of Microsoft Word and put your words over it and it's considered an official logo is it Akila? well you're not I mean official logo is is kinda you know that's subjective but there are terms of service and terms of use which is actually what my input was going to be in this whole conversation is there are terms of service copyrights terms of use for just about everything out there aside from just the Microsoft which their terms of services you're not supposed to use it for commercial use um, anything you Google, I, I see a lot of people who just Google something that's really cute and then they put it on something. They might even know enough Photoshop to change the color and they think that that's okay and they can walk away with it and just start using it. And it, you know, that's absolutely not true. You're not supposed to just walk away <laughs> with someone's artwork or someone's design or even someone's photo. I'll tell you guys briefly a really quick story. I just found I just saw on Facebook a photographer took a picture you know those Ann Jeeps pictures where you have the babies like in really cute poses sleeping and stuff a photographer does those type of pictures and she took an outtake of the blank of the baby on the blanket and the blanket was really over the dad so it was like you know the way to get your baby to sleep during those photo shoots is really make the parent part of the prop. So when she closed up on it looks like the baby's on a cute blanket but when you look out the baby's the dad's really like the table super cute someone she blogged about it and put that picture in her blog um, someone took that picture off her blog put the words you know using Instagram or whatever they use these days put the words you know a way to get the baby you know looking for a way to get your baby to sleep and here's the way and then they posted on Facebook and it got over a thousand shares I just happened to another friend of mine who's expecting we were talking about the whole thing like baby pictures and she found this we just happened to click on this one picture where the photographer herself had seen that it was posted on this person's page so she commented on the photo she was livid most people would be excited right that much viral content <laughs> you're super excited she was livid you know, I'm calling my lawyers, I and mean, she's in a photographer's union, we have rights, and this wasn't supposed to be done to this. The parents didn't even want the picture on social media, but it's on social media now, and all these terms of service things. And granted, I have my issues with what she did anyway, but she was she absolutely right. Up. The the picture, yeah, which is, I did a whole blog post on that. You shouldn't put it up if you don't want it out there, but even though she was wrong in her own right, taking the picture, reusing the picture if someone now puts that picture on their postcard for their business or if someone you know tries to make it a watercolor looking effect and now that's their logo all of that stuff is illegal just because it's out there just because you can google it if you go to the bottom of the google page and you're doing google searches it'll there's actually a checkbox sometimes at the bottom and sometimes it's in your advanced settings that says show me the ones that are copyright free and when you do that you get a lot less images right everything out there is not copyright free no matter what you think what you say you know I always tell people buy the stock images go to I think it's one two three RF they're pretty cheap mm -hmm. buy the stock photos buy you know the little things especially if you're doing it for something that's going to be consistent it's one thing to right click save for a blog post and you know if something happens you get in trouble you can always take that down really quick you never want to have to strip your logo off of everything you got. Right. You never want to have to go back and now you got to get a brand new logo because someone is, is sent you a cease and desist letter. 
and you can no longer use that. So if it's something that's going to be consistent and important to your company, important to your brand, make sure you put the time, the money, the quality into it that you're going to need to sustain it because you know all it takes is one body, somebody to send it across my at Microsoft's desk and it's like, oh, or the minute your business finally hits big, You've hit big. You've got you know TV coverage with Microsoft Clip Art, and next week you've got a letter. I right. never want that. Right. And that happened with um, uh, Adrian Graham, who is a very good friend of Career Magazine, and she and I do another show called Real Talk with Real Entrepreneurs. But um, someone that was working with her used a photograph, and they came after her. You know, this was a photograph that was in one of her blogs and, you know, they came after her saying, hey, you owe us money for, for use of this picture. And, I, you know, I don't know whatever happened with it, but I, I do know that it, it really happens, people. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you're going to pay now or you're going to pay later because yes. everything. <laughs> you know to put it. Pay now or pay later. It's a cost associated with free. So. This is Career Conversations. I'm your host, Stephanie C. Harper, and my co-host, Anitra Henry Hunting. We're talking with Akila Thompson Robertson today, and we're talking about the tools that we use, the free, the favorites, and the flawed. We have a few more to get through, but I wanted to just say, you guys, we we have to understand that everything is not really free, right? <laughs> it's all coming with a cost. Another thing that um, we talked about uh, when we were putting the show together was a blog talk radio. Okay. All righty. So here's the deal. I know some of you guys are saying, well, Stephanie, you had a blog talk show. I sure did. I had one for six years before it was uber popular and before everyone else had one. But let me tell you a little bit about why I had a blog talk show. Um, as the employment expert for 91.9 FM in Atlanta, you know, a real radio station with a dial, right? Um, as the employment expert, I come on on Mondays and I give out career tips. And what would happen is I would come in, I'd give my career tips, and the tips that I would use, people would want to call in and have a conversation with it, have a conversation with me. Well, that didn't work for the station. One, I wasn't being paid to uh, sit on the phone after my segments aired and do you know, answer conversations. I was being paid to come on and provide career tips. And so the two hours that I was there down at the station, that's what I was supposed to be doing. Not only that, they had me written into the script. So there were times when I needed to interact with the host of the show, which was the Reggie Gay Gospel Show. There were times when I needed to interact with him because there was nobody in the studio except for he and I. So there were things that, you know, I, I needed to have a live conversation with him to keep the radio show going. So in an effort to meet the needs of the people who were listening to the show that had more questions about the tip that I would come on and give, that, that's why I started the Blog Talk show. Okay? It was a companion to what I was already doing on real radio, all right? Not because I wanted to be a radio show host. And I know that there are people who are saying, hey, you know, I don't really care what Stephanie C. Harper has to say. I have a blog talk show and I'm proud about it. Baby, kudos to you. Do your thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, and we, and we put this on the list because we saw a post recently where a, a young lady who has a PR company was um, bragging that she had gotten her customer um, onto a blog talk show. And we were thinking, okay, you know, that's not major media. So when you put that down as an accomplishment, as a public relations person, it really doesn't help you as a public relations person because it's not major media. And so we put this on the list because this is one of those things that's free. 
it's a favorite, but it can also be flawed for some people. The reason why I stopped doing blog talk is because, like I said, I had the show on blog talk for six years, and there are still, you guys can still go and search. It's called Career Conversations as well. So if you guys want to go out there and listen to some of the old shows, it's still there. But here was the problem that I had with blog talk. It started out as what? Free. Okay. After using the service for six years, um, Blog Talk said, listen, you can't use this for free anymore. If you want to use it for free, you have to only do a 30 minute time slot. And uh, you can only do it for 30 minutes, and it has to be within, or if you want to keep it in your current time slot, which, mind you, in six years, I had built up quite a bit of a following, right? So if I wanted to keep my following and keep my show in that time frame, I had to pay to do so. I had a problem with that. I had a problem with the way that it was done. I had a problem with the way that the whole rollout went because what happened is they, they started to introduce premium features as an option. And many people didn't buy into the premium features. Some of the premium features were, you know, screening your calls before you allow people to come on the air. Well, that was never an issue for me. For six years, I figured out a work around it. You know, someone called in, I would just say, call her with the last four digits of 4511, you're on the air. So I didn't need to pay them $30 a month to be able to look at the number before I let them come on the air. I have the dashboard, so if someone comes on the air and they start talking crazy, I have the ability to just kick them out of the call. So there was no point in me paying the extra money for the premium features. Well, I think a lot of people thought like me because the premium feature thing didn't go over well when it was an option, so it was forced upon us to either take this premium or move your show to another time. And not only do you have to move your show to another time, but now you have to be limited to a quick 30 minute show. That didn't prove to be effective for me. It didn't prove to be beneficial to those people that I was serving. So I just decided to nix it all together. And um, that's why we do it this way now because this is really the the rebirth of the Career Conversations talk show that we used to do on Blog Talk Radio. So, ladies, did you guys want to add anything about Blog Talk? I say it's good for those who've been doing it for a while. Like, I'm, I've seen some with a pretty substantial, at least they say they have, <laughs> pretty substantial numbers. And I think if you're going to advertise, like if you're going to put that on your website or going to put that on your information that I was on such and such, you know, blog talk show, put the number, like such and such blog talk show with 10,000 viewers per month. Sometimes you have to, just like a resume, you have to quantify if right. it's something that may not be, you know, as, if, if, if it's something that's questionable, so if it's something that can be good or can be bad, if you quantify it, I don't care who's the name of the show, I care that it had 10,000 viewers or listeners that month. Right. You know, and I'll look over the fact that that show happens to be on Blog Talk. If you just say right. Blog Talk, like you said, I'm going to see that it's Blog Talk and I'm just going to, okay, that's nice to know, but it's not that substantial. Right, and that's a good point that you make, um, Akila. That it's not that the issue is not that it's a blog talk show. So I don't I don't want you guys to misunderstand my point there. It's the issue is not that it's a blog talk show. The issue is it's a free show, and I think that is where people misunderstand because getting airtime on the radio is cost effective. I mean, if there's a cost factor. Either you have to pay for your airtime when you're going into a major network, or you have to be invited by the network to be featured. Okay? And so I think that's what we need to really point out when we're talking about, you know, blog talk radio. I'm not at all saying people who have a blog talk show are not effective. I don't, I don't want that to be the comment that people walk away with because that is not at all what I'm saying. There are some fantastic hosts on Blog Talk. There are some people who are doing some fantastic things on Blog Talk. What I'm talking about is when you use, when you go out and set up an account and now you say, oh, guess what? And by the way, I have a radio show. So, you know, I'm talking about tools that 
we use. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so tools that we use. The free, the favorites, and the flawed. Anitra, did you have anything to add about Blog Talk? Yeah, I, I want to say this about um, Blog Talk and understand that where I'm coming from is clients that I d deal with are in that solopreneur, brand me uh, type situation. And what I want to point out is everything is not for everyone. So every time that I see someone get a blog talk show, or I am a blogger and I have a WordPress blog somewhere, it causes you, in terms of your marketing, you have to be able to be consistent with it. And if you are not able to consistently host a show at a certain time in a certain, you know, like we do every Monday, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Pacific, okay? If you're not able to commit to your show times, making sure that you have guests, making sure that you have themes, if you are not committed to releasing a blog with whatever regularity, then don't do it. Right. That's the most important thing when it comes down to the branding. All right. Okay, ladies. So we are... Um actually at our hour but let's talk a little bit more because I think that this is some good stuff for people but um, <laughs> we, we have a, a list of things here um, I, we have Google Analytics which I want uh, um, Akila to speak about you know and I'm gonna just kinda tell you guys we don't have time to go through all of these so we'll pick out the most important but let me tell you what the the tools we use of course the most common tools that people are using today in business and I just want to tell you guys what they are for those of you who are looking for tools um, so you have Google Analytics which is a statistics tool that helps you to track your website traffic you have EcoSign which is a, an electronic signature system you have Dropbox which is an online storage system great tool great 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 tool um, you have Odesk, which is a database of contractors. There's a bunch of pros and cons to that, but I don't think we have time for that today. Um, and then we have our MailChimp, which is an email marketing system, which is why we're having this conversation today. And then you have your Skypes, your Googles, which are both video chat options. You have Hootsuite, which I am a fan and a friend of, um, which allows you to post to multiple social media sites. Um, and then you have Square, which is really good um, for credit card processing. I know that PayPal also has um, a credit card processor, but there's something with the, I think it's the Android phone that doesn't work well. Don't quote me on that, but there is a, an issue with the one that comes from PayPal. Um, and then, of course, we have Evernote, which is an organizational tool. So those were all of the items that we had on our list. We will not have time to go through them today, but there they are. So if you'd like to go and research all of them, by all means, you have the information to do so. So um, Akila, mm -hmm. I'd like to come back to um, Google Analytics. So can okay. you talk a little bit about that? It's a free tool, but talk about the, the pros and cons and the effectiveness of why we should or should not be using that tool. Um, I don't think there's a reason why you shouldn't be using Google <laughs> Analytics. It is probably one of the best free analytics tools that that's out there and that, that you can get. I think it's only the, the only free one um, that's out there, but definitely the best that you can get. What Google Analytics is, is a tracker for your website. So it's a lot more than a hit counter. It gives you all kinds of information. But they give you, you sign up for an account through Google. They give you a little code. You, If you're using WordPress, there's plugins you can use to embed that code. If they're hard coding it, you put that code on um, each of your sites, on each of your pages. Wix and Weebly ask them. I'm not exactly sure how you get the code on there, but I'm sure it's something that a lot of web um, owners are trying to do. So you put this code on your site and it allows them to track your traffic. And in tracking your traffic, they can tell you what pages people are going to, what pages they're going to next. Like it actually has a drill down so I can tell if you came into my, my home page, to my about page, to one of my blog posts, 
or from my blog post to my services. I can tell the way that you're going through my site. I can tell where you're coming from. So I can tell if you're coming from New Jersey. I'm in New Jersey, so I can tell if you're coming from New Jersey or California down to the city, New York City. I can tell, and they do that by IP. So if your IP is a different place, that's a whole other thing. Um, I can tell what kind of browser you're using. I can tell the device that you're using. I can tell a wealth of information. And what this information really helps with, I can also tell the keywords that you use if you search for me. Um, and what, where, like, if you came to me from Facebook or Twitter. So how this helps you as a business owner is a couple of ways. It helps you know where your marketing is most effective. I know that most of my visits come from Facebook. So I spend most of my time and my marketing efforts on Facebook. I have things that sprinkle in Twitter and sprinkle in Google Plus or sprinkle in, in Pinterest, but I know that Facebook is my kind of bread and butter. So that's where I spend a lot of my time cultivating those relationships and making sure that I have content out there. The other thing it shows you is what content is the most popular. Like I, at the end of every year and sometimes at the end of the month, I run a look, I run a thing to see how many hits my different blog posts got. I can see that people like when I do comparison or inspiration type posts and like I did one on um, 15 sites you won't believe a WordPress. That thing continues, I did it last year sometimes, continues to blow up on my site and I know that people want to see more posts like that because that's what's attracting people. I can see what keywords they're using. I did a post on favicons. I get a lot of what's a favicon, where to get a favicon, all those things that are actually mentioned in that post. So I know maybe that's a good post to do a follow-up on. I can tell what services they're looking at. I focus mainly on my web design services, but I offer other services. Most people look at web design. I can even tell what gallery photos they're looking at and what clients it seems like they are more interested in. I know if you're looking at my e-commerce gallery, that you probably are looking for an e-commerce site, so I know how to beef up that information. So basically, it just gives you all of these analytics that help you to determine what to do next with your website or next with your marketing. Because that's that's the problem a lot of owners, business owners, have is they put it out there and they think if you build it, people will come. That's not true. <laughs> you have to advertise it as well. And then once they do come, they don't know what they're what's what's really attracting people especially if you're doing e-commerce I, I talk a lot about e-commerce because I have e-commerce clients and they seem to have the most um, they need the most effort but if you're doing e-commerce if you see people are always looking at earrings and necklaces why would you put rings and put a lot of effort into getting shoes you want to really focus your your market on where things are working and Google Analytics will help you determine where things are working so that's it Okay. Well, another. Um, oh, Anitra, did you have anything to add on the Google Analytics? No, it's a it's a tool that I've used before, and I really like it. And Keila summed it up greatly, so there's nothing I need to add. All right, great. All right. Well, we have our our Skype and our Google Plus. Let's let's talk about those tools. You guys who are watching right now, you're watching live on our YouTube channel, Google Plus, um, Google Plus Hangouts. But guess what? We have some issues with it. So um, from time to time, we have people who are traveling, people who are unable to connect via their iPads. We have quite a few issues. Um, Akila, how are you connecting today? Today I'm connecting. I'm, I'm at home, so I'm going through my Wi-Fi. It's been okay. pretty OK, but I have had some, you know, sometimes it'll slow down. Okay. Well, I know that we have um, a, a friend of ours that we talk to in the New York area, and when she talks to us via her iPad, um, we cannot view her photo. So we can only um, hear her through the sound. And Anitra, I think you had an iPad issue as well, right? You want to speak mm -hmm. to that? Yeah. Um, on iPad, I cannot um, connect into... Google Hangouts that are launched through Chrome. Um, you can hear me, but you can't see me kind of a situation. I know that for whatever reason across the different platforms, it doesn't translate everything the same. So it can be a problem. Another thing about Google Hangouts um, is the more people you add to a Hangout, 
uh, the it doesn't work as well. It's like it has so much bandwidth, and it'll tell you you can have up to nine people in a chat. You can actually have nine people in a chat, but what is the quality of the chat becomes the issue. So that is some of the issues or the flaws that I see with the Google Hangout um, app as it is. Also, um, just the tools that you have inside. Like, you guys are able to view our lower third right now that gives you our names and information like Akila has and Stephanie's has their uh, independent websites that you can see. Um, we have to go through the Hangout, well, through the toolbox to be able to set it up even though there's a lower third icon that doesn't work properly. That doesn't make any sense. Why have the lower third icon that doesn't take you straight to the lower third? Why do I have to upload the toolbox to go into it to put my lower third on? So it's just different little things that are bugs and kinks, and I'm sure as uh, Google Plus gets um, more popular, that these are things that Google will um, change and fix. And I'm looking forward to the changes and the fixes and for more people to be able to connect because one of the things that I really like about Google Plus is there's so many different communities, particularly for small business owners and entrepreneurs to get to know each other from around the world. You're not just stuck to your local area, but you really can't just, let's say you're in a community that has 2,000 people and a hundred of those people find a time that's good for them and they want to be able to get on a chat, a theme chat, and talk about different things that they're experiencing in their business. You can't do that. You can only do it nine at a time and then it may not be, uh, everybody may not be able to join in and have the same type of quality experience with the Hangout. Okay. All right, well, the other problem that I have that I've been having um, with Skype, which I do 99.9% .9 of my coaching sessions via Skype, is sometimes when I go between the two platforms. You know, I spend some time um, doing Google Plus Hangouts, and then sometimes I will go back and, and talk with someone by Skype. And sometimes my camera won't work. So I, I don't know why that happens but sometimes it does happen you know I never know until I log on whether or not my camera is going to work I only have that problem um, with Skype uh, it's really really weird <laughs> you know I can log into my preferences and it'll show me that my camera is on while I have Skype open I can log into my photo booth and my camera will pop right on but for some reason um, it won't let me um, use Skype sometimes after I have been in a Google Plus Hangout. So I don't know what the two have to do with each other. You know, I can completely close one down and um, I can completely close it down and, and, you know, switch between the two. Even sometimes reboot my computer and I'll still have you know, a slight issue. So that's one of the free favorite and flaws on my list as well, you know, the, the uh, Skype and the Google Hangouts. And I think, Anitra, you know, you talked about um, Google Plus, about the, the flaws with it. Um, Akila, did you have any to add? Um, no, I've, I've used Google Hangout really with you. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Believe it or not. Um, okay. Skype, I actually use that with you too. Yeah. I have a couple of not so free because I do webinars. I actually have some paid services like Start Meeting and um, Meeting Burner that I use more frequently. But again, that's because I use them for webinars and use them for paid training sessions. I think Skype for you know everyday coaching, just one on one, and that's really the reason why I don't like Skype because you can't get into multiple people. And most of my sessions are with multiple people. Uh, you um, can, but it's not the free version. Yeah, okay, the free version. <laughs> and even that, you can't get in. Like, when I do a webinar, I'm doing 25 to 50 people. So I need something that's a little bit more. So those are the ones that I use that aren't free, but they're, they're good to use, and they're there. So um, when I do use Skype and use the Hangout, when, usually when we talk, they work pretty well for me. All right, great. All right, well, we're coming to a close. We have... Um, 
the last thing on our list, I think we talked about um, all of them except for Evernote, which we'll save for another time. And Odesk, I'll, I'll put this out there just really quickly. Odesk is another tool. You know, it's just like anything else. Do your research before you hire, okay? So it's a, um, a database of contractors. So those of you who are looking for um, people to work with you on different projects, Odesk is an, an, op an option for you. Um, but again, you know, do your research and ask for references for the people before you hire them to work on a project for you. And then Evernote is just simply um, an organizational tool that gets rave, rave reviews. It's one of those tools that you can kind of put everything in one place. You can put your notes, your pictures, et cetera, et cetera, and it will sync between your computer and your phone. So those of you who are looking for an organizational tool, Evernote is one of those free that I would have to put under favorites. All right. Um, and then lastly, we're going to talk about some of the email marketing systems. Um, Anitra, I mean, not Anitra, but Akila and I, also went back and forth about this, <laughs> where <laughs> we were, um, we were, I use Aweber, and um, Akila was looking for a service, and I shared with her, you know, my research for a lot of the little techie things is Ty Goodwin. Ty Goodwin is a, a, a techie, and she's a friend of Career Magazine, and she's my research when it comes to some of these kind of things. If Ty likes it, I use it. Right. So um, Ty, a few years ago, the first thing that I had when I first started my business was constant contact. And at the time, I knew nothing at all about HTML. I knew nothing at all about, you know, putting the themes and templates together, et cetera, et cetera. And I, con I mean, constant contact, not eye contact, but constant contact was not very user friendly for me. And so it just happened to be that it wasn't it wasn't a tool that I was able to get the most out of. What I found with Aweber was that it was a little bit easier for me to navigate. Um, when I started to use Aweber, I also started to learn how to maintain my own site. Yeah. And so I learned a little bit about, you know, behind the scenes and HTML code. So if I were to tap into constant contact today, I pro it probably would not be as difficult for me as it was mm -hmm. some nine, ten years ago when I first um, used it. However, I chose to go with um, Aweber because it was just an easier platform for me to navigate through. Mm -hmm. Now, Akila, I know that you have gone through a few of them, mm -hmm. so why don't you... Um, kind of share your experience, share your experience and, you know, why you chose to, um, why you chose to go the route that you went and what you ended up choosing. Um, really quickly, because I actually have to drop off in a couple of minutes. Um, I went through Aweber, I'll tell you where I went through. I've been through Constant Contact, Aweber, MailChimp, Eye Contact, and Get Response. Yeah, I've been through five. <laughs> Um, the, what I what I found and what probably for everyone is it really depends on your needs. I actually really really liked constant contact. I really wasn't into it yet, so I didn't get there. Um, that was the first one I tried. I really really liked Aweber because I liked the um, I liked the, the opt in boxes. I liked the templates that it had for the newsletters. I liked a lot of the features that it had. The big problem for me was I didn't like the double opt-in when you're not getting it from their form. So they want you to get everyone from their form. If you're not coming in through their form, then they send that person an additional opt-in message. So if I'm at a, a fair, an event, a networking event, and I get everyone to sign up for my mailing list, I go to put in my mailing list, they now send them an additional email to say, are you going to opt-in? You lose a lot of people that way, and I thought that was bad because you know, I've already gotten people to sign up. Same way I do webinars, some of them are free through Eventbrite. And now they've already signed up and said yes, they'll talk to me on Eventbrite and they're now being asked again through Aweber. That was a huge issue for me. So then that's when I tried um, MailChimp. I didn't like MailChimp 
A, because of the connotation, which is the conversation that kind of prompted this call, because now people know that, that MailChimp is free, so people are looking for it to be a free service, and to me that kind of messes up the perception for, you know, I do web design, it's a little bit of a high dollar product, um, you know, and I'm using a free mail service to give you your web design tips. That's a little bit, to me, was not the perception I wanted to give my clients to, you know, get them to want to come and, and use my services. Um, get response, I actually like get response, and I think I'm actually going to move to get response very soon. Um, well, who I'm with right now is eye contact. I really like eye contact. They let me do the opt-in forms. They can have better forms, but I can at least code them myself if I wanted to. They, but they have opt-in forms. They have pretty decent templates. Believe it or not, I've been on them for five months now. I have not paid for them yet. Oh, wow. They don't, they don't say they're free. But when you join, especially if you join through somebody's affiliate link, like I have an affiliate link, um, you get a $50 credit. Their service for the first 250 is like seven or eight bucks. The next 400, the next 500 or something like that is like 15 bucks. But the, the service is so cheap, pretty much economical, that you're going to spend your first three to four months with that $50 credit. Then if you do sign up for something like the referral, which I have, um, if you get one or two people to sign up, every time somebody, ref every time somebody else gets to um, sign up for a referral, you get fifty dollars and they get fifty dollars. So you get another fifty dollars. And then recently, because my list is getting towards the next level, they just sent me another fifty dollar credit if I would agree to upgrade, which is really only five or ten more dollars of their dollars because <laughs> they gave me the fifty dollar credit. So even if and I say that and go take you through my whole thing because you know, even if it's not free because it says it's free. There may be some credits out there and some affiliate ways and some other ways to get things for a very economical price and so you still have the advantage of looking and having that really branded feel without you know it being really expensive and, and looking like it's completely free and cheap. So those are my <laughs> that's my uh, male male drama, I guess. Okay, well, Akila, I wanted to kind of go back to, and I know that you have to drop off, I do as well, but I wanted to talk about just briefly as we can kind of bring this to a close. I know that we talked about a lot of tools today, but I wanted to go back to your comment, and I think this is kind of where we can end it after we just kind of talk about this comment again. You said, customers sometimes perceive your stability and value based on the tools that you use. Can we talk about that for just a moment? You know, we talked about a lot of free tools, and I see you, Anita, grinning, so why don't you dive right in? <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. You know, people's perception is their reality, and how uh, these days a lot of people are formulating um, the solopreneur, the brand me, and why, what makes you different than and the next person that does basically the same thing that you do um, and what is easy to make that decision based off is how you present yourself and if I have to email you on a Yahoo or Gmail site if the bottom of your business card has Vista print stamped all over it um, you know those are things and if it's done in a Microsoft you know template setting that tells me a lot about you. It's kind of like body language for social media. You know, uh, a lot of times it's not what you say, it's how you're saying it, what you're doing when you're saying it, that tells a person more about you than your mouth moving. So that's what I think of when it comes down to the tools that we use and what they're saying about us. All right, Akila, did you have any closing words about the tools that we use? No, I mean, I agree. I think the body language for social media is a great analogy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a shopper, and I go to a lot of malls and a lot of stores. You get a certain look when you go into Bloomingdale's that you don't even get when you go into Macy's. You get a certain look when you go to Macy's that you definitely don't get when you go to Target. I look at businesses and I look, you know, even at my own business and if I'm 
I have a Gmail that I use only for like newsletter signups. So I'm not saying throw it away, but just don't send it to your customers. Anything that's client facing, I look at what people are using and if you're using something that's free or I know is very very cheap and not I know there's a referral program that you might be getting it cheap but I know for a fact it's free um, I look at that and even in the back of my mind I'm thinking okay when you come with your price you're charging me that for what you know it's kinda like you know and then my other thing is this the stability of it I also judge how long you've been in business, and I know it's probably bad, but if I'm judging as a business owner and someone who helps other businesses with this, believe me, your clients who never deal with anyone else but you, they're judging too. But I judge, you know, based on what I see other people, what, what you have. Like, you have Gmail, maybe you're not as great. Or how long have you been in business? Maybe you're still starting because you're still at the Gmail stage or you're still you know you still don't have enough followers to get charged by MailChimp maybe you're just starting maybe you're not at that level where I'm thinking you are I think you should be and I I think you wanna look you wanna look as grand as possible so if it's client facing there are plenty of free tools Hootsuite, Evernote, Skype, there's plenty of free tools that you use behind the scenes to run your business but I think something that your clients are gonna see and your clients are gonna go out to if you have you know, a hundred bucks to put somewhere, put it there. Put it to where your clients are actually going to see what's going on. Right. And I think that's the key. And I think that's the purpose of this conversation today is, you know, when you are, and, and Akila, you hit the nail on the button when you said you're charging me for what? You know, again, if you want others to invest in your business, you have to invest as well. And that does not mean that you have to have a $15,000 website with bells and whistles. It does not mean that, you know, your email marketing system has to cost you 5000 a month. You know, Infusionsoft is, what, $299, $299 a month. You know, everybody's not at that level. But there are some people who are who are at the the fifteen dollar a month with Aweber or the you know twenty five dollars a month with constant contact or whatever the fees may be. And you have to decide, you know, what it's worth for your business. When you come into, you know, a networking group and you say, hey, who can give me a free email? It, it's it's it makes you look at um, the customer or, or the, the business in a different way. It kind of makes you look at them a little sideways, you know. Why aren't you willing to invest in something as important as a company email? That's uber important to a company. That's, that's your branding message. That's part of your brand. It has to be a part of your budget, okay? <laughs> so, you guys, we have these shows because we really, really want want to educate you guys on some of the things that we see that people are doing not necessarily that they're doing wrong but things that people can definitely do better and that is why we have shows like this you know we went through a lot of tools and you know I want you guys to take the time listen to this broadcast go to the tools find out which which works best for you and find out which ones of those tools that you may be using the free service for that you might need to do an upgrade and pay a little bit of money so that you're getting the most bang for your buck and so that you're definitely making an impact in your business. So I'm Stephanie C. Harper, publisher of Career Magazine. This has been another issue uh, or another episode of Career Conversations. And yes, this is one of our free and favorite tools, but we've also shared with you that this is also a tool that has some flaws. So this is what we're doing. We're talking about things that will help you to know better and live better. So until next week, I'm Stephanie C. Harper, Anitra Henry Hunting, and Akila Tompkins Robbins Roberts, and I'm just messing up her whole name. <laughs> we are signing off. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye now. Bye. Bye.